and hello once again and welcome to my daily chat this is episode number 819 and we're gonna have an interesting conversation today as I was provoked no wrong word inspired that's a better word by a friend of mine who wants to talk, have me speak more about this to talk about the masculine and feminine polarity and also the masculine and feminine balance and how it applies to both genders so I'm putting a big topic on the table so let's see how much I can get through today it may end up being breaking it may end up breaking it into two parts I'll see so if you haven't seen my broadcast before, shame on you. No, I'm like, <laughs> if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I'll explain my, introduce myself first, then I'll get to the topic. So, hi, my name is Barry Selby. Surprise, surprise. You should be seeing my name somewhere around this broadcast. Um, this is a YouTube, sorry, this is a Facebook Live I do first, does go onto YouTube. I'll tell you all about the links at the back end of the broadcast, and I'm probably gonna put some links in the comments for you to reach out for support as well. So, prepare yourself. Um, so besides my name, what else? Oh yes, <laughs> I'm an inspirational speaker, a love and relationships expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. I'm a best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. And it's also what inspired these talks over two and a half years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. See, masculine and feminine, both in the title. I thought it was about time I did a talk that broke that apart in a more understandable way. So now, at uh, episode number 819. I've been doing these for a while, and I've talked about masculine and feminine pieces quite a bit over the last two years, well, more than that, since I started almost. But this one I want to talk about, about how to balance it inside yourself. So this is more of an individual talk, basically saying, yes, you, doesn't matter what your gender is, have masculine and feminine energies inside of you. How do you find balance with that? And also, where do you find your natural leaning, so to speak, your tendency? So, let me first break down some of the key things because if you haven't watched my broadcast before or you haven't studied some of the teachers I've studied with, you might presume that masculine is male and feminine is female. Not so. Which is one reason I said about both genders. Masculine and feminine are actually polarities or energy um, expressions within each of us. And I'm going to speak generally to the binary conversation because I'm not, I don't have a, I don't have experience with, and I'm not an expert in the non-binary world. Although a lot of I have friends of mine in that world, but that's not where I speak from. So I'm speaking in this conversation about primarily male, female identified people, just to keep the conversation uh, clear. We as individuals carry both masculine and feminine polarities. For the sake of, let, me, let, me, let me give you another example before I get to that. So masculine and feminine are, as I said, energetic. They're polarities. They're, and they're a, a, a range or a spectrum of where we align ourselves on a energy expression, when we're putting it. And the best way I can give you an analogy is that mas is the polarity spectrum is kind of like the poles on a magnet. If you know anything about magnetism, or if you ever played with magnets when you were a kid, most of us did, especially those U-shaped ones, those, those red ones with the metal ends, one end is masculine, sorry, is masculine. <laughs> I totally blew that one. One end is North Pole, one end is South Pole, because magnets have poles on them, like pole, like, like a polarity, so to speak. See where I'm going with this one. And like a battery has a negative and positive pole on it, same thing. So if you put on a battery two positive poles together, nothing happens, there's no, no juice there. But if you put a negative and positive pole and magnet together, you get sparks. Just pretty good analogies, better than magnets. I was just talking about magnets because magnetism, there's a positive and there's a north and south poles that when you put them together are very attracted to each other. Oh, you're both in there. See, it makes sense. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just talking to myself. Excuse me while I do that. So north and south poles on a magnet attract to each other. North and north poles don't attract. South and south poles don't attract. In fact, in magnetism, they repel. But the battery analogy actually is resonating for me, so let me speak about that. So, battery technology, which has come a long way because of electric cars, I'm not going to go down that path because I'm so fascinated. I could talk for hours on that too. But battery technology requires a north, requires a positive and negative terminal to create a circuit. Sexually speaking, I'm going to play there too. A circuit is completed when a masculine and feminine energies energies come together. Now. As I said at the beginning, masculine and feminine are energy, not gender. Male and female are gender. If you're someone who happens to, to be in the gay spectrum of conversation, 
which is, I've got plenty of friends in that too, so I'm not going to say anything good or bad about that. It's just a choice, I believe. No, it might be biological. Sorry, that's a conversation I don't, open, don't open, open on that kind of worms. That's a much bigger topic. But the, what I'm trying to say here is that masculine and feminine polarities apply to gay relationships, lesbian relationships, as well as straight relationships. So this understanding I'm providing may be assistable to you, doesn't matter what your sexual preference is, or inclusive of that, so to speak. So there's masculine and feminine polarity, like poles and a magnet, like, hey, Catherine, I haven't seen you for a while, I've seen you by broadcast. There's poles and a magnet, there's also terminals on a battery. Polarity in relationships is the same thing. Polarity in the narcissist is the same thing too. So again, masculine and feminine are not the same as male and female. However, there's a caveat. We as human beings tend to align ourselves. So if a man is, uh, sorry, a man will tend to lean towards, uh, let me, sorry, a straight, I've got to be clear, I'm going to define this because I'm talking about getting straight here. So straight man, will tend towards the masculine end of the spectrum, generally speaking, but not always. A straight female woman, female woman go together, yes, will tend towards the feminine end of the spectrum, generally speaking. But again, not always. There are men who naturally reside in the feminine end of the spectrum, and there are women who naturally reside in the masculine end of the spectrum. And that's not to define their sexuality, because there are straight women who are masculine, there are straight men who are feminine. And again, these polarities apply to gay relationships too, and that's obviously same gender. So let me just make it simpler, I hope, <laughs> that we carry both inside ourselves. Because as much as I'm saying that we tend towards one end of the spectrum or another, so masculine or feminine end, the reality is we don't, we don't live in one or the other. I don't, I don't think there's almost anybody who's fully 100% masculine or fully 100% feminine all the time. We actually ride a... a um, a wave, so to speak, or a path through that, that spectrum that doesn't stay at one end or the other. It moves towards the middle a lot of the times because when we're in the world, we're expressing ourselves sometimes from a masculine place, sometimes from a feminine place. Some of us are more stuck in one or the other. Personally, personally, I believe, and I'm just checking if that's true or not before I say it, Personally, I believe it's actually more effective if we have fluidity where we can actually have both genders, sorry, both polarities, get the words right way around, alive within us. And I'll explain how it doesn't work from my own experience because I did that and it didn't work. So you'll understand how it can work afterwards because I'm going to explain what doesn't work then what does work. So in relationship, which is my primary focus of my work, so in case you haven't seen my broadcast before, I talk about that, that a lot. It takes the polarity of masculine and feminine into a relationship to have sexual chemistry. In fact, I've said this before, in fact, it's, it's chapter in my book, that chemistry can wear off, but it can be recharged by increasing polarity. The polarity extreme, extremis, the extremes of polarity, masculine and feminine, is what generates chemistry in sexual connection. So if you're in a relationship where the juice is falling out or maybe the chemistry is falling apart, you might want to think about recharging your polarity by restoring, if you're more feminine, into the feminine strength, if you're masculine, more of masculine strengths because they don't create more chemistry and more juice in a relationship. That's a massive tip, by the way, if you're in a relationship, relationship that's been flatlining sexually. So take the one to note. That's a, that's a freebie. <laughs> so we have both inside of us. In my younger days, when I was in my early dating life, a lot of the women I went out with were actually more masculine than I was. And I wasn't conscious of this, and that's the thing about this whole thing, is that you may still be doing it even if you're not conscious of it. But I was tending towards the feminine side of the spectrum, mostly because the work I was doing, I should say the, the personal growth work I was doing, the seminars I was teaching, were really heart-centered. I will say, which, which part do you want to say, Catherine? You're talking about the polarity piece in relationship? I will talk about that if that's the one you're asking about. So let me finish my point here, but let me know. So for me personally, I was attracted to these women who were more masculine because that was the, the, the chemistry, the polarity, the excitement I was getting because of the opposite end of the spectrum we were running on. I was towards the feminine end, they were towards the masculine end. Neither one actually, excuse me a second, I think, from my belief, hmm, I was to say all three of those relationships were at the wrong end of the spectrum, but I'm now not so sure because I think one of them was she was actually more naturally in her masculine, generally speaking, I was occupying the feminine to accommodate that. And that's a key thing, by the way, is we tend to also sometimes if we're out of alignment, we'll accommodate in the wrong end of the wrong end. That's not what I'm saying. In the end of the spectrum, that's not a natural residence to accommodate our partner. And that's happened before too. 
I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt, you know, the whole thing. So, and Catherine, yes, okay, I'll come back to that point. So the recognition is the fact is that we got to find where your natural residence lies. Again, you have both inside of you. And in fact, what happens is we tend towards one end of the spectrum or the other, one end of the polarity towards masculine and one end of the polarity towards feminine. I've, and again, these chapters in my book that I've talked about this because I've studied with some master teachers for the last, well, since 2007, so 12 years. This is a passion of mine to speak about this stuff because it changed my life completely. In this polarity piece, we will tend to find we naturally reside somewhere toward one in the spectrum. So we, again, we won't be 100% one or the other. We may be 70% of one and then 30% of the other. We, because just to be clear, we are 100% whole individual beings. So our polarity blend, mix, however it works out, adds up to 100%. So you might be 90% feminine, 10% masculine. You might be 80% masculine, 20% feminine, or whatever it is. It always adds up to 100% because you don't have anything missing. So in case you need a reminder, you have nothing missing. So in the polarity piece, you have a tendency to be towards one in the spectrum or the other. Now, in life, things happen that give us opportunities to be in one end of the other spectrum. For example, if you're driving, you're generally going to be in your masculine because it's a directional energetic of going somewhere that's a single focus. These are all masculine traits. But women drive and so do men, like surprise, surprise. So when a person is driving, they tend towards their masculine, which is what women and men both do when they're driving. Now, there's a joke about how men don't ask for directions. It's really the masculine that seems to know the target. And one of the challenges of the masculine is when we know where the goal is, we don't always have a clue how to get there, but we'll go straight towards it anyway. The feminine will tend to be checking things around and getting to know what's available. So in the joke about driving in the old days, women would ask for directions because the feminine is willing to find out more information. The masculine tends to go, I know what I'm doing, I'm going to go there. That's the old style, which we're now growing beyond because the masculine is starting to become more, I believe, more... Um, open to learning from other places too. So that's that piece. So in this context, we carry both polarities. In another example, um, when, let me think which would be a good example to use. The simple, the easy go-to is, is that if you're, if you're playing with a, well, hmm, there we go. So if you're playing with a puppy or a kitten, something like that, you're generally in your feminine, whether you're a man or a female, because what's happening is you're in a playful energy, and that playful energy is tended to be more, because in simple terms, movement is feminine. Stillness is masculine. This is the extremes. Using the yin and yang of masculine and feminine, there are certain principles that make it work. Oh, I'm, I'm going to, sorry, I'm only about 17 things here. I've got to be careful I don't go too far down this, this rabbit hole because it'll be too much to teach in one session. So... Playing in an energy of playfulness, silliness with, with, a, with a kitten or a, or a young puppy, or even with babies, is a feminine energetic. So I love all the questions coming up, and I'll get to those questions. So don't, don't panic or don't worry. I, won't get, I will get to them. That's the reason why I'm not going to go too far down this rabbit hole, because there's so many questions showing up. I want to cover them as well. So I'll get to them. So what I'm saying here is to get clear is that we have both inside of us. So let me just give you the piece I didn't fill in there. As I said, we are individually, whether male or female, have a tendency towards one of the spectrum or the other by default. It may be towards the masculine end or the female, feminine end, regardless of our gender. So just to be clear, we generally line up male with masculine, female with feminine, but not always. So there's a range of here. When we do find ourselves towards one end of the spectrum or the other, we will be over 50%, because it'd be 50-50, we'll be 60-40 or 70-30, whatever that is. So we'll tend to be one, one end of the spectrum or the other, where it'd be say 65, 70, 75, 80% of one, and then 35, 30, 25% the other. But we move, as I said, so depending on life. So you may be naturally, in your, if you're a woman watching this, you may be at 80% feminine, 20% masculine. But when you're driving, you'd be more on your masculine because that's what it takes to drive straight line cars getting through this destination. That's a masculine trait. It's not saying it takes you out of who you are, it's just what you use to get there. And this is the thing about the masculine and feminine polarity. We use them without thinking oftentimes because you don't suddenly go and get in the car and go, okay, I need to put on my masculine mindset now and drive. No, you just do it. And part of it is also ties up with the left and right brain piece, which is masculine and feminine too. The right brain, which is the creative, is more feminine energy. 
the left brain, which is more linear, is the masculine energy. So both men and women carry both hemispheres of the brain, but it's kind of like if you're left-handed or right-handed, that might give you a certain tendency too, and I'm left-handed. So I would tend towards the feminine on one level too. And these are all different levels, by the way. It's not saying anything broad strokes. These are different levels. So let me go back to a couple of pieces. Something that um, was asked earlier about how to, the chemistry and relationship. So I've talked about this in my book, as I mentioned. I'll give you the link to the book at the back end so you can get your own copy if you don't already have one. Hint, hint. Chemistry is something that is what is often the initial attraction to somebody. You get initially drawn to them by chemistry. It's like, Simon, wow, it's great, amazing, wonderful things. And maybe three, six months down the road or three, six years down the road, if you can extend it, the chemistry tends to fade. And you end up being in a place where you're wondering where the juice is. You're just feeling like flatline with the relationship. Now, it could be the relationship is over. And there's no juice whatsoever. You just have no attachment and you walk away. But if you have a desire to be in that relationship, but there's no attraction there or there's no chemistry there, you can recharge it by doing what I talked about earlier, which I mentioned again, is recharging your masculine and feminine polarity. Because masculine and feminine, as I said, you naturally reside at one end towards one end of the other, but we don't live at 100%. And what creates the chemistry the most effectively is when one partner is fully masculine at 100%, one partner is fully feminine at 100%. Now, if you become friends, which happens a lot of time in relationship, you're more 50-50, you're more androgynous energetically, so you don't feel a chemistry, a chemical attraction. So it's how do you get back to those, those places? One way you do that is to do things that recharge the batteries for that polarity. So if you're a more of a masculine person, go out doing things like sports and competitive things, put you back in your masculine. Go out hiking and doing very arduous like strength things tend to build up the masculine energy because it's, it's generally t tied to the masculine male energy. Again, generally, not always. If you're more feminine aligned, then do things like um, going to the spa, or doing yoga, or doing other things that are more rejuvenating for the feminine energetic. To so do things that could be going shopping and playing with colors. So going, going, going to try on clothes can be very feminine um, recharging. So when you have that, that's putting the polarity back in and it puts the gap in between the two partners, which gives you more of that attraction to each other. Now, one extra piece, because everybody has different scales of chemistry, but one thing that makes the chemistry even more fun when, you are already, when you've already got the chemistry restored or you've got it in the first place, one thing that makes it even more powerful when you're in a relationship and you want to get into romantic um, amorous expressions in the, in the bedroom, one thing that I was taught one of my teachers, I love this piece, is simple to do. Once you have that connection inside and you love that desire to be together, to make it even more potent and magnetic and sparks are flying, as I mentioned with the batteries earlier, is that you do a what I call a ritual. And this ritual I recommend, which is something that if you're in a relationship you can play with and, and do, it's symbolic but it has an interesting effect. When you're both together and you're in, in, with each other, and this can be done right before you jump into bed together, or, it could be, or before you start, is facing each other, you take turns, and the one of you that has more masculine energy will symbolically gather up all the energy in their body. You can do it for like using your hands just to, get, to gather up energetically like you're doing it physically, or you can just do it turning inwardly and bringing it out that way. But you do is you take all the feminine energy that you still have inside symbolically and you give it to your partner for safekeeping. Your feminine partner, the feminine person in this partnership, does the same thing with a masculine energy. There's the lesser of the two gathers up to give it back to her partner symbolically. What it does is it puts you in your place where the masculine partner is more fully inhabiting his masculine, their masculine, excuse me, and the feminine partner is more, in, more fully inhabiting their feminine energy. It creates more, more, it's like taking the chemistry to another level. And that creates great chemistry in the bedroom, great connection, great passion, and makes sex work really well too. So that's a, that's a bonus tip to, too, which I mentioned earlier, so that's another bonus on top of the bonus. If you're single, you can still play with these energies when you're out dating, when you're out in the world, and see what happens. You actually can find yourself noticing how people respond to you because you're choosing which polarity to be in. And this is where you start to become a masterful because when you realize you have both energies, it's not like you go, oh, I want to avoid that one, I want to avoid this one. It's like, why not play with both? If you're going out on dates, then yeah, play up. If you're a woman and you're only feminine, definitely play up the feminine more. Opens that space. So for example, if you're a woman on dates, here's a little thing I'd recommend. Let the man open the door for you. Let him open, help, your, help you on with your coat or help you off with your coat. Help you sit, have him, you know, sit down. Let, 
Sorry, I'm going to go back to the masculine piece because I realized I'd said something ahead of time. <laughs> so if you're on your masculine, if you're, if you're a man or if you're just more masculine with your partner, you can open the door for them. It's usually the masculine that opens the door, even though it's usually the male. So this one, again, is generalities, masculine, male, feminine, female in this alignment piece. On dates, a man, and ladies, you'll feel this. If a man steps into his masculine and opens the door for you and helps you off with the coat and helps you with your chair sitting down, opens the, the passenger door of the car to help you get in the car, takes charge and leads the date, it's a real turn on for a woman who's in a feminine. Now, if you're on your masculine, you might feel challenged by that, which is a clue. You're feeling challenged because the man's taken over the masculine. Maybe you want to let go of the masculine for the date. Now, maybe you spend your life in business in your masculine, which most, most women do. So it's learning how to detach from that when you get to when you get to be out in the social and the dating arena. Here's the thing though. I talked about this a couple of days ago and this is one thing I want to make sure you understand. Ladies, particularly when you're in your feminine, because I want to speak to this piece particularly, is being in your feminine can sometimes feel like weakness because you're being in the feminine, which is known, excuse me, you're being, as a woman, you tend to feel like the weaker sex in the way it's been to told in society. Now, the challenge with that is sometimes it can feel like you'd be taken advantage of by a man who's in his masculine. The truth is, a man who's masculine won't take advantage of you. A man who's not in his masculine might do that. And this is the thing that's different. I have a thing about the masculine versus the macho because there's the egocentric male who doesn't run from a place of deep heart, who might want to be more controlling and more desire to take charge. But if, if he's in his masculine, he'll do it out of caring and out of respect. And that's another piece of the puzzle which I talked about a couple of days ago. So getting back to the piece about owning both. The reality is that masculine and feminine polarities are part of who we are. We get to dance with them, play with them, and express them how we choose to. And like the terminals on the batteries, when you come together, they can create sparks of real connection. And I love the feeling of, even with my friends, having that wonderful sense of polarity. I've been single quite a while, and I have a lot of female friends. When they're in the feminine, it just brings up a great sense of, respect in me as a masculine man. And I do my best to stay my masculine because I know it's where my natural resonance is. That's the work I've been doing for a long time because I was out of alignment for many years. So by stepping into that place for myself, I find myself being much more um, responsive and respectful of women in their feminine. The thing is when I find women in the masculine, this is another piece by the way for men watching this, because women are so driven in the world and oftentimes many women are in the masculine a lot to do their work, but it's not their natural residence. They want to be in their feminine. For some of them, it's hard for them to get out of the habit. So a man who knows this can hold the space in the masculine so solidly that he basically is not trying to compete with her. But what he's doing is holding the space so grounded in a solid way that first of all, she can trust it. Secondly, she can let go of it because she knows that he's got that space taken care of. This is one of the biggest challenges that men and women have in dating is because they're both in the masculine fighting it out. And then sometimes men give up. That's why they ghost or they flake out oftentimes. Or a woman doesn't know that she can be in a feminine, which actually is more powerful than the masculine, by the way. So she doesn't understand. Oftentimes women don't understand, excuse me. As a general theme, you may be different from that. Sorry, Catherine. Yes, I know you, you're, not, you don't, you're not a native English speaker, so let me slow down a bit on that one. So... When a man holds in his masculine space in an authentic, true way, a woman who's in a feminine will feel it, understand it, and appreciate it, no problem at all. A lot of women, unfortunately, have been trained in society that being feminine was, it was almost too fierce, thanks to the feminist movement, I believe. But the truth is, when a woman's in a feminine, she's much more free to express herself fully and be, um, what's it, unleashed? That's not necessarily what you use but she'll have more playfulness and lightheartedness because the man's got the masculine held on to. Bitter shirt, you're welcome. I don't speak in Germany anymore. I used to live in Hamburg over 30, 40 years ago. Damn, it was a long time ago. So I'm not going to try and do any German. So Catherine, <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but that's as far as it goes. So understanding this piece of the polarity and then how it can enhance your relationships is a key that makes things work better. It's great to know stuff about the right things to say or the right sort of dates to go on. But to actually have an understanding of the polarity is almost like a secret, not a secret weapon, but it's a secret idea that makes you much more freedom in relationship, to be able to, to play and have fun and express yourself in a way that is much more aligned, more nuanced, and much more joyful. So I hope this has made sense. I think there's some other questions I want to get back to, so let me just go down back to, um, where is it?
Oh, strong women. Catherine, I'll get to that one as well. Oh, yes. So Mary had a question about, uh, does the polarity ratio happen over time, change over time? There is some research out there, and I'm not a big, necessarily big um, fan of it, so to speak. There's a um, there's research saying that as, as we age, as in beyond um, middle age, women tend towards more masculine, men, men towards more feminine. There is a chemical shift that can happen if men don't stay true to themselves and women don't stay true to themselves, I believe. And I don't want to get too far down that road because it can get really messy. But the thing is that when, as people get older, unless it's consciously activated, so I'll say it this way, unless you consciously practice your natural alignment, you may tend towards the opposite side of the spectrum or the, 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 the polarity. So to answer your question, Mary, polarity can change over time. And if you don't maintain it in a relationship, it will tend to flatline as you'll both become 50-50 versus what? 80, 20 or 20, 80 to make that balance. So if you're in a relationship or if you're looking to have a relationship and you're, you're past middle age, remember that you can still connect to it. It's not like you can't have it. It's just a matter of, we just forgotten how to do it. So remembering the practices to come back to feminine heart for women, if that's your natural tendency and men naturally to your masculine, if that's your natural tendency, which I said before, then you can do that. Um, I hope this made sense. And then Catherine, you had a question which I want to get back to well, we do learn as we age, but also there's some chemical things that change, I believe, in us a bit too. Um, and what was the one Catherine said earlier? Oh, yeah. Why? Oh, yes. Why are some men seem to be afraid of so-called strong women? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've talked to that one before. The challenge has been is that a lot of women in the world have been trained, as I've said this many times recently, in the business world particularly, because that's where most people meet each other oftentimes. The business world was created by men for men. And women have been trying to fit in ever since. I, I say it, it's kind of my catchphrase to say it that way because what's happened is the business world was created by a very um, structured male way, of, male way of doing things. And women had to copy that to fit into the cultural society of business and, and, com com excuse me, and commerce and manufacturing. So a lot of women who got into the same field started basically acting like the men. It did make for some interesting relationship challenges because, again, women started being in the masculine some as men did. doesn't really work. So the reason why some men are afraid of so-called strong women is because oftentimes a woman who's in the world doing business is actually occupying her masculine energy and strength. And again, we have both sides to play with, so we can do both. So when a woman's more in a masculine, a man who's afraid of that doesn't know his own masculine. Simply put, if a man's in his masculine heart, a woman in her masculine is just a woman in her masculine. It's no, it's no, I mean, it's almost like um, a pal energetically because there's no polarity there energetically. But when a woman's just in the feminine and he holds the masculine, that works in a relationship, as I mentioned earlier. But when a man is not in his masculine, in fact, I would say it's the macho type man who's afraid of a woman in her masculine too, because a strong woman is a woman usually is in her feminine, is in her masculine, even though, okay, I gotta careful I say this, I think I'm gonna come backwards. <laughs> a woman in her feminine is much more powerful, much stronger than a woman in her masculine. This has been, I mean, this has been taught to me over the years, so I know this one well from experience. So when a woman is in a masculine, she can be stronger than that too. But the reality is when a woman, actually when a woman's in a masculine or a feminine and the man's not in his masculine, when a, when a man doesn't have a clue, <laughs> that's when he can be afraid of it. The reality for me is that when a man is in his truth and understands who he is, he's not afraid of anything. He's certainly not afraid of a woman in her masculine or a feminine. In fact, if a man is in his masculine and he meets a woman in a feminine, he would be, my belief, because I was, in deep reverence and respect for that because that's much more um, aligned to values. So when a man's afraid of a woman who's in her strength, ladies, walk away. He's not, he's not, he's not, he's, he doesn't have his pre awareness to be present to where it is. Even in private, men seem to be afraid. Well, Catherine, that is something that um, they may want to get some support with. I don't usually work with men, but if there's men want help with this, you can send them to me. <laughs> I've been through the lesson myself because I went through that myself, just to be transparent. I did go through my own times of challenges of being confident and trusting who I was around women. Again, because I was outside of alignment, I wasn't in my masculine because I didn't know what it was at the time. And I was doing work that was putting me in my feminine. But I didn't know it's feminine either. So as a bottom line, I want, to, I want to keep this fairly short. I was gonna make a short talk, but well, didn't the longer than I planned. But what I want to get to the point of saying is that ladies, when you own your feminine power, it is a power, own it, enjoy it, 
savor it, and don't settle for less than you deserve. Men, when you're in your masculine, again, I'm seeing generalities the same. Women are in the masculine, feminine, men are in the masculine, generally speaking, but there's always variance. But men who claim they're masculine, own it, honor it, savor it too. That's what I've been doing, is understanding how much I enjoy being in it because it gives me much more sense of presence, of effectiveness, and of direction. One way you know that man is really in his masculine is because he's up to something big in the world. He's got, a, he's got a purpose, a vision, a calling. It isn't about his ego, and it's not about his bank account. It's about what he's here to do, to make a difference, to impact the world in a positive way. That's, for me, what exemplifies masculine purpose. Um, ladies have purpose too, but it's different. <sighs> thank you, Catherine, and thank you, for, thank you for the questions. It got me thinking on some deeper levels. Um, this, this is part of a conversation I've had for a long time about this. I've got so many talks about the masculine and feminine polarity. This one is really a, a, a piece for a friend of mine who asked me questions yesterday that will hopefully help her. I'll send her a link to this afterwards. I mentioned at the beginning that I will put some links in the comments and also tell you about where you can find my replays because I do this every day. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, shame on you, as I said before, jokingly. But I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which you can like that page, which is barryselby.author. And also put them onto YouTube because why not? Better have a backup plan, and also people like YouTube sometimes better than they like Facebook. Less distracting. My YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd love to get some more viewers. I've only got a few hundred right now, and it'd be nice to get some. I know it's a lot to get a milestone, but anyway, just nice to get some more viewers. Um, YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. So you can watch them there. If you have any questions, thoughts, you want to get some help, please message me over social media. Some links I'll put in the comments. My book, as I mentioned several times, I'll put that in the comments so you can get some help with that. And for the ladies in particular, I'll put a link in there for a chat with me because if this is starting to make sense or it's starting to challenge you and you've got some more clarity, guidance, and support, I will put a link in the comments for a chat with me so we can have a complimentary chat and discuss where you are, what you're looking for, how I can help you get there. And that'll be it. I appreciate you being with me and also to any questions. If you want to share this, feel free. free feel, I'll try that again. If you want to share this out, feel free to do so. If you have any questions, thoughts, etc., put them in the comments below. I'll respond when I sign off. And uh, yes, Catherine, sorry, you have to watch the replay. I'm, I'm basically I'll give you the links where you find the replay, where you find the replays, and also the um, two links I'll put in the comments to get some help. So read, what, read those comments and you better see what I said, Catherine. Sorry, I didn't mean to rush again, but it's just getting it out there quickly because I want to get signed off because I got somewhere I got to be. Um, I hope it makes sense to you. This is a pivotal piece for some people about how relationships work. It was a game changer for me. 12 years ago and it continues to inform my life and inform my path which is why I talk about it so I hope it's been of help if you want to get more support reach out to me I'm here to support you and help you I thank you for watching as always this is my daily chat again join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow same time same channel and uh, that's about it I thank you for watching I appreciate you being with me I'll see you again tomorrow take care